In today's lesson, we're going to talk about another way to determine or to, to uh, calculate the distance between two points. You should have uh, previously watched the lesson on calculating distance without a graph. And this distance shortcut is just another way to do the same thing, to calculate distance without a graph. In fact, it technically still uses the distance formula. It just organizes it in a way that some students will find is easier to do and will cause them to make fewer mistakes. It's up to you. If you want to continue to use the distance formula, <clears throat> if you don't have a graph, uh, that's fine. If you want to learn how to use the distance shortcut method, that's fine as well. I'm going to go over it with you and it's going to take you some practice. You'll have to use this a number of times before you can commit it to memory. But uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and do it. So this is in your Intro to IM2 Flipbook. This is section number one. It's the top flap on the right-hand side. So top right-hand side, right next to, if you look what we've done before, it's right next to the distance without a graph. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, write your title for this section called the distance shortcut. <clears throat> and here are the steps that we'll go through to, to do this method. And I'm going to go through all the steps first, and then we'll actually do the, the math work. So first thing we're going to do is, if you're going to use the distance shortcut, you're going to take the two coordinates that you're trying to find the distance between. And you're going to write one on top of the other. And you can see I'm using the same coordinates that we used in the lesson or in the section on distance without a graph, because I want to show you that this method, of course, gives you the exact same answer as the distance formula. Now the question is, uh, is it important which point I put on top and which point I put on bottom? And the answer is no. It makes no difference. Uh, whether you put, in this case, point B on top and A on bottom, or A on top and B on bottom, the answer is going to come out to be exactly the same. So step number one, what you're going to do is, you're going to subtract the coordinate values. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Step number two, you're going to square the two new values. Step one is going to give you two numbers. You're going to square those two numbers. Step number three, you're going to add those two numbers together and then put a square root over it. And then step number four, you're going to simplify or convert your answer from step number three into a simplified radical or a decimal. So here's your steps. You can pause the video if you need to and to get those written down. Please don't continue uh, the video until you do, because you want to pay attention to how I explain how to do this process. So, step number one. Let's change your color here. Step number one. Subtract the coordinate values. So again, as I mentioned before, it doesn't matter whether you put this coordinate on top and this one on bottom, or this one on top and this one on bottom. The process will come out with the same answer. So you're going to subtract them. I'm going to put a minus sign here to remind you that you're going to subtract the coordinates. So let's take a look at our coordinates. We have the x value here is 12 minus the x value here is 16. 12 minus 16 is negative 4. Negative 4. And in this column, we have a y value of negative 3. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. So there's our two numbers that we get from step number one. Step number two says square the two new values. So let's square them. So I can go ahead and put parentheses around here and put a square, or parentheses around here and put a square. I don't need to do that though. In your calculator, you could just put in there parentheses negative four squared and negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. Negative 10 squared, or negative 10 times negative 10, is positive 100. Now notice in this step number 2, you're always going to end up with positive numbers. 
because if you take a positive number and square it, 4 squared, that's going to give you positive 16. And if you take a negative number, in this case negative 4 and square it, well a negative times a negative is a positive. So these numbers in step number 2 will always be positive. In fact, if you want to put some little notation here, a positive or something to let you know, they're always going to be positive numbers. Alright, step number three. Step number three, add together and square root. So we're going to add these two numbers together. 16 plus 100 is 116. And then it says square root that number. Now, you see some similarity here, class? Look over to your left. Take a look at the answers that we're getting here. This square root of 116 is the exact answer we got using the distance formula. 16 and 100, look, those are the two numbers that we had inside the radical over here. Negative 4 and negative 10, now we do have a switch in signs between these two numbers, 4 and 10. The reason is, if you had put the coordinates for point A first and B second, you would have ended up with positive 4 and positive 10. This makes no difference though. Remember, once we do step two, they turn positive just like they always turn positive over here when we use the distance formula. So, so far so good. And we can see from our previous example that the square root of 116, if you put that in your calculator, was approximately 10.8 units. I'll just put a U there for units. So you can see this distance shortcut, it pretty much goes through the same math that we go through when we use the distance formula. The nice part about the shortcut is you're not dealing with x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. There's less of a chance for you to mess up the signs inside the formula like you could in the distance formula. So I think this method is a more reliable method to figure out the distance between two points without a graph. But again, it does require you to memorize these steps. The number one thing students will do wrong when they try this is they're going to forget that we're subtracting one set of coordinates from the other and not add. So that's something you have to memorize. Otherwise, doing this procedure comes out pretty nice and you will end up with the exact same answer that you got using the distance formula.